Hey everyone! So making gold in WoW Classic can be quite tricky. So I've put together my top 10 ways to make gold in World of Warcraft Classic. And actually some of these apply to retail too. I'm sure there are many other ways to make gold out there, but these are my personal top 10 ways. Leave your best ways of making gold in the comments. At number 10, we have the Sell to Vendor Profession Items. I recommend a few add-ons such as Vendor Price and Auctioneer. Vendor Price allows you to see the vendor prices of items, which enables you to calculate profit. For example, a ruined Mithril Hammer requires 18 Mithril. The ore is sometimes very cheap on the auction house. Two cores of earth, one solid stone, and four thick leather. The weapon sells to vendors for two gold, 16 silver. Now bear in mind, this is guaranteed profit, so you will always get this amount of money. So if you can buy the materials to make 10 of these items for less than the vendor price, then you're in profit. Not bad for 10 minutes work. And plus, you can always watch Netflix on the side. Professions aren't always the easiest things to make money with, especially in Classic. But there are still ways of doing it. Learn the auction house and track which items are cheap. Auctioneer can help you with this. Well, it will give you a percentage figure of how cheap or expensive the item is relative to the other items. At number nine, we have farming the Badlands. Oh yeah. One of the best places to mine for mithril ore, iron ore, and solid stone, as well as farming meat and other materials. This is a wonderful area for mining and making money. Actually, this is also one of my personal favourite areas in Classic WoW. It just kind of has a desolate feel, and it kind of feels like everything has a purpose in the area. So, as you can see, the red areas contain stone elementals, which drop solid stone. You should be able to get around 50 solid stone an hour approximately, which shells for about 6 silver each on the auction house. Or more importantly, you can turn these into grindstone in blacksmithing and you can use these in many different recipes. The blue areas are areas which are best for farming. This is farming ores, really. The purple areas contains a cave full of ogres and treasure chests. And the green areas have dragons. You could probably get some good money skinning the dragons, though I'm not a skinner. At number eight, we have elemental fire farming. Now these sell for about four to six gold each, but they also have quite a low drop rate of about two to three percent on most mobs. These are used to create greater fire protection. Uh, pots is an abbreviation of potion. The best places to farm are Ongoro, near the centre, Atari Highlands, there are, there's an area with a lot of fire elementals, and there's a really nice area in the middle of Fellwood. You can buy Dream Far Foil from the auction house uh, relatively cheaply, normally get a friendly guild or a buddy to make you greater fire protection potion. I mean, if it was easy to get, then, you know, people would uh, not pay so much. At number seven, we have Farming Essence of Earth. This can be farmed from the Infernal Sentries in the same area of Fellwood where you are farming your elemental fires. You farm these by killing the level 52 to 53 elites. Now these can be quite tricky um, to kill for some players. I can solo them okay. If you do find them tricky, it might be worth teaming up with a buddy in the area as you can actually get a lot more loot a lot more quickly and you can also take much larger pools so it is absolutely worth teaming up with someone else. You can also get rock in farm elementals in Sif... Oh, I can never say this area. Sifus and the Burning Steps. So the Essence of Earth sell for about five to six gold each and they are something which is quite good to farm, especially if you're in Fellwood and you're farming your um, elemental fire anyway. So at number six, we have buying recipes from vendors and selling them on the auction house. Now this works better in retail WoW because people generally have a lot more money. So an easy way to make money in retail is to buy food recipes, for example, from a pub in Stormwind and other areas. You can actually buy these from around the world because a lot of people, especially on retail, just want the item and they don't really care so much about the money. So again, you can make quite a lot of profit here. And at number five, we have the 
auction house, amalgamations and upscaling. It sounds fancy. Let's search, for example, for ore, O-R-E. Let's say, for example, there's a lot of mithril ore for five silver each. We could buy all of the cheap mithril, mithril and then convert it all into mithril bars, providing you've got that ability, and sell them on the auction house for 15 silver each. In other words, that's about 2.5 gold for a stack of 20. If we hypothetically buy 200 mithril ore at 5 silver and sell the bars for 15 silver, that's a 2 gold profit right there. These very quickly add up. If you're, for example, making lots and lots of different transactions, for example, you can quickly make quite a lot of money with very little effort. It might be worth putting on armor which is less expensive so that you get a smaller repair bill. That's something to consider, guys. Now, I would recommend you become very familiar with one small area of the auction house. So, back in vanilla, I made a lot of money buying and selling leather. Now, in vanilla, I'm making more money <coughs> selling ores and blacksmithing. At number four, we have buying and selling meat. So, you really need vendor price installed for this. So, on the auction house, mystery meat sells for about one silver 40 copper, for example. Now, the cost of hot spices is 36 copper, meaning the cost is 1 silver 76 copper. Wow! So, just from this, you can make 1 silver 24 copper selling the finished product to the vendor. I could actually leave meat selling to somebody else, but... If you want to watch a program on Netflix and you just want your character to sit there for, say, five minutes making you some money, then this is an easy and relaxing way of Netflix and chilling. Now, at number three, we have dungeons, and this also includes raids. So dungeons are a great way of making money generally just from the creeps and the random item drops that you get. If you get lucky, you might get an item which is worth possibly hundreds of gold. So, for example, the first time ever I went to Upper Black Rock Spire, Mirrodin's Signet dropped, which sells for about 150 gold upwards. I kept this item as it's great for a DPS warrior, and I've used it an awful lot over my time in Classic WoW. Another popular item from Stratome Living is the Righteous Orb, which sells for about 25 to 45 gold each, depending on your server and demand. These are used in popular Crusader weapons buffs, and you normally get between one and four per raid. So, in a five-man raid, you stand a pretty good chance of getting one of these. Normally, if someone gets one of these, then they will actually forego any extra rolling after that point, so that everyone in the group is more likely to get one. And number two, we have boosts. A popular place to boost a group is the Scarlet Monastery Cathedral. So, in a nutshell, a powerful level 60 will charge around 2 gold per run. So, warriors and mages are probably the best at giving these boosts. And lower level players will basically pay the more powerful, higher level players to run them through the dungeon really quickly with minimal effort and they'll obviously be able to roll on any items that they get. So actually it can be a very good deal for the people running the dungeon. Boosts will normally be offered on the Looking for Group World Chat. If a warrior were to boost four players through the Cathedral in Scarlet Monastery, then that's eight gold that you're making before you even set off. And any other gold you find on the run, obviously you can kind of keep. Of course, people running can greed and need on all the items. Now, I would normally greed roll on some of these items, depending on what I'm feeling like. I run a buy one, get one free policy. So if you pay two gold for a run, then I would usually run through the cathedral twice, for example. Now, I'd say you can easily get through the cathedral in about uh, 25 minutes, fairly easily. It's, it's not a massive run, but the loot's very, very good. Players get about double the experience they normally would get. It's a good deal all round. I also have a uh, policy which I haven't even, I haven't really put into place, but 
I normally charge alts two gold and mains one gold so in a nutshell alts are a secondary character or a tertiary character who you might want to level up but you probably have a powerful main character mains would be basically your first character so again I think this would be a nice thing to do and it would also mean that mains who have a lot less gold to spend still only get to spend one gold and may still benefit on the last boost I did this scarlet chest piece dropped which is worth around about 100 gold now one of the runners got the item which is not bad for a two gold investment so again you can get a lot of money from sort of doing these runs um, both as a person doing the run and the person selling the run bear in mind that if you're one of the people actually on the run you're going to be getting a lot more equipment and you know more sort of chance of actually getting you know really high-end stuff if you get through the raid more quickly and you go on more raids and like I say you get about twice the experience as you would uh, either questing or going through raids without um, a boost and at number one we have the dark iron bars now I'm not saying this is the best way in the game of making money I'm sure there are far better ways of making money in the game but this is just one of the best that I have found so far and I've only been doing it fairly recently so I noticed a lot of the time the dark iron ore on the auction house doesn't sell for very much in fact I've seen it for as little as 10 silver a piece so in order to be able to smelt the dark iron ore you need to give one of the dwarves in the eight ghost fight um, his name is gloom rel 20 gold bars 10 true silver bars and two star rubies and then you can basically learn to smelt dark iron ore but there's a catch you can only smelt dark iron ore at the dark forge which is located near the molten core entrance in black rock depths so in other words if you want to smelt a load of dark iron ore you really need to go through and do a run which you <clears throat> could possibly last about 45 minutes maybe about an hour now now what I do is I actually say that I'm going to be running a, a Molten Court Attunement run, okay? Most people understand um, what that means in Black Rock Depths. It kind of means that you're not going to spend a lot of time sort of running around doing the prison break and whatnot. So you're just basically going to get to the forge and, you know, you're obviously going to take out the bosses along the way. But, uh, you know, this is an awful lot quicker than doing a sort of full run, which, to be honest, takes freaking ages. And, you know, I really hate it. And also, generally, the run stops before the suppression room. I think it's called the suppression room anyway. But, um, yeah, that's generally where the run will stop. And that's a good thing, in my opinion, because <laughs> I really can't be bothered to do, you know, all the rest of the game, I, all the rest of that particular run. So anyway, Let's say you can hypothetically pick up um, a dark iron ore piece for 10 silver, okay? Well, that will be 80 silver for all eight, and then you can produce a bar which sells for about six gold. So the profit in this hypothetical scenario, which is actually quite realistic, is five gold, 20 silver. Now I've sold about 50 bars so far, so I'm sure I've paid more than 10 silver at all but nevertheless if it was 10 silver that would be 260 gold profit which really isn't bad so there's about a five percent seller's fee on everything sold on the auction house and there's the deposit to worry about if it doesn't sell but in in order to put 20 dark iron bars on the auction house it'll cost you about one gold in the deposit which you get back if it sells. So honestly, that's really not too bad. So the moral of all of this is you should always be very, very vigilant for a good deal and you should always be looking for a way to make a profit. Like I said earlier, you should become a sort of expert in your particular area in the auction house and World of Warcraft generally on your server. And I also think many of these skills that you develop in World of Warcraft are transferable. So, for example, you could go on to make money on eBay or something like Amazon in the future. And a lot of people make a lot of money off Amazon if you can get a product made, ship to Amazon and 
sold from there. Obviously, it's kind of risky, but nevertheless, all of this stuff, I think, you know, has transferable application. So I really, really hope that you enjoyed this content and please consider subscribing and even liking me on Patreon. And, you know, I would actually really appreciate if someone could, you know, give a few pence a, a month or something on Patreon. It honestly makes all the difference, guys. But I really hope you enjoyed this content and I look forward to it hearing your thoughts in the comments what are your best ways of making money in world of warcraft classic okay guys until next time that's Wartorius signing off <laughs>